Hello, my name is Alexander. In the last video, we talked about BDD, Behavior Driven Development, added a few tests to counter app, and even used a test first technique. In this video, I'm gonna show you how easily BDD like tests might be added to a completed real life app. I chose an example from Resocoder's Flutter Firebase and Domain Driven Design course. I highly recommend this course for each and every Flutter developer. For sure, you will learn a lot from it. I would recommend getting yourself familiar with the solution we are testing. The link would be in the description. The sample app has a great mature abstraction layer, code generation, and a lack of tests. Let's fix this together. First of all, I will fork the repository. The app wouldn't compile with the current version of Flashbar, so let's update the dependency. As you might remember from the previous video, we need to add a BDD widget test dependency. Build Runner is already here as it used by other packages. We would need to simulate the Firebase responses, so I'll add a Makito package. If you are considering bringing the BDD approach into the development process and wonder where to start, my recommendation is to start with a test for the next feature you are going to implement. This app is already done, so let's start from the beginning. In our case, this would be a splash screen. I'll create a test folder with an additional feature folder and put a file splash.feature in it. The first testing scenario would be login page is presented for not logged in users. One of the most critical rules of the test first technique Always run your tests right after you create them. This might seem overwhelming until the first time the brand new test, which must fail, passes. We'll use the same command from the previous video to generate Flutter tests from feature files. The generated test would not even compile, hence we assume it's failing. Now we need to implement steps. The first step, I'm not logged in, is an entry point. Hence, it's a good place to initialize the app environment. What does not being logged in mean from the technical point of view? That means that when the app gets an iAuth facade and invokes a get sign in user method of this facade, it should get none. This is highly project specific implementation. Check the original series from Resocoder for details. The problem is that we don't have an instance of the iAuth facade in the get it, so we need to set up it first. I'll create a new folder with a special injection helper.dart file in it. This file will have a setup injection function with the following content. The app passes a production environment variable to the configure injection method. We'll pass an environment.test. We still lack implementation for iAuth facade and iNode repository, so let's register them here. What should we put into factories? We cannot provide real implementations as they depend on Firebase and Google sign in plugins, which do not work in tests. For that reason, we added a Mokito plugin. I'll create mock classes that extend mock and implement required interfaces. We are done with I'm not logged in step. Let's see what's wrong with the app is running step. It seems that we just need to replace the stub name of the app with the real one. Fixed. This app uses block, so we need one additional line. Done. Let's run our test one more time. Great, refactoring time. It's hard to read such long tests. Wouldn't it be great if we could replace all these lines with just I see the login page step? Let's do this. Super! 
The splash screen has one more scenario. It will show a notes page for a logged in user. So let's cover it as well. We always run the tests first. Failed? That's good. Now we can implement steps. The first step is similar to the I'm not logged in step, but instead of none, we need to return some. Some user. It's a good practice to put this model somewhere in the util folder, or maybe even create a generator for such models. For simplicity, let's create a user with unique ID and some email address and name. Notes page requires some data to show. That's the reason why I added this step. The implementation is somewhat similar to the authorization mock, but instead of the user model, we'll return a stream of empty notes list. Let's run our tests. Ok, this is it for splash screen. How about a sign in feature? Firstly, I'd like to check that the user is able to sign in with valid credentials. See, I reuse the same steps from the splash feature. The most scenarios you write, the fewer steps you need to implement to make tests work. First things first, we must ensure that the test is failing. Let's implement the missing steps now. Now it passes. I will add one more test. We need to check that the user is not able to sign in with invalid credentials. Let's ensure that the test is failing and implement the missing steps. Let's run our test. Wait, why do we have an error? That's because of the implementation of Flashbar. It creates a timer that is still working even after the test is finished. We can easily fix this with one additional step. All other features and scenarios might be covered with the same approach, so I will leave it to you to finish the testing. I'd like to show you one critical point in working with legacy projects. Let me stop the code generation and run the test from the command line. I'll put this coverage parameter to the call. It will generate test coverage information for our project. 
I use coverage gutters plugin for VS Code, which works with this information. So when I tap on watch button here, I can open any source file, let it be signinform.dart, and observe which lines are covered with tests and which are not. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll put a link to the project with the test in the description. Thanks for watching. See you.